both. Uh, joint cracking can have several causes. It can be physiological, which is normal, or it can be pathological, meaning it's a sign of some process, most often osteoarthritis. For example, here's a situation. You were sitting, maybe writing something, working at the computer, eating for a long time, or just sitting and relaxing. Uh, you stand up and as you do, your knee cracks or you stretch your arm uh, and something cracks in your shoulder or you turn and your back cracks. This situation is normal. That is when you've been in one position for a long time and your joint hasn't moved for a while. This joint is between the vertebrae and the os. It's all the same. All joints are structured the same way. Two bones, most often two, are covered with cartilage and connected. All of this is covered by a joint capsule and between them is lubrication, the synovial fluid. If a joint hasn't moved for a while, its first movements might cause cracking, but after that it moves smoothly without cracking. At that point, the synovial fluid starts to be produced well. There's more of it and the joint moves freely and smoothly. This can happen. Hearing a single crack is normal if it doesn't recur with more movement. That is, after a long period of inactivity, for example, when you wake up in the morning, cracking is possible once or twice. This is all within the normal range. The second case is when cracking occurs with every movement. This often occurs in the hip joint. That is, when a person lifts and lowers their leg, the movement is not smooth. For example, the leg goes up smoothly, but when he starts to lower it, there's a click. It's as if the leg slips a little off its trajectory for a short distance. And then it continues to go down smoothly. This is not a, a sign that, that something is wrong with the joint itself. This crunching sound isn't because something happened to the cartilage or because there's something wrong with the production of synovial fluid. It's a sign of uneven switching of muscle activity from one muscle to another. Here are two movements, for example. The leg goes up, the leg goes down. And different muscles are working during this. When the leg goes up, the group of muscles that lifts it up is working. When the leg goes down, the opposite muscles are tensed. And in the case, when you make one movement, you lift your leg up and start doing another movement. If the muscles haven't fully switched from one group to the other, that's when the movement happens. It's not smooth. And in this case, for example, the front thigh muscle, the quadriceps, hasn't fully relaxed, and as this muscle is still tense, the downward movement happens. In this case, you'll hear a click, quite a loud one, and you'll feel that the joint movement doesn't happen in a straight line, not along the joint's axis, but it shifts a bit and then comes back. This often happens with the temporomandibular joint as well. That is, when In cases when the chewing muscle works differently on the right and left sides or the temporal muscle as well, the movement may not occur simultaneously in both joints. If one joint lags behind the other, it can also happen with a slight click. But this movement itself is not a sign that something is wrong with the joint. However, if there is this click and many people think that if they work the joint, meaning if it clicks, they need to exercise it. They feel like it lacks movement. And they think that if they move it more often, it will help the joint. But it's at that very moment when this click happens that a small microtrauma occurs in the joint. One joint surface slightly touches the other but, and by repeating this movement many times you actually start to injure your joint so if this situation occurs 
you shouldn't try to fix it with the same force that causes the click. One option is when there is incomplete relaxation of the muscle that performs the opposite movement. And the second option is besides the muscle that, for example, performs the flexion and extension movements. There are muscles that don't participate 100% in this movement, but are, for example, on the side, which perform in the hip joint besides the up and down movement. There are also movements outward and inward. These are the two movements. And when these muscles work incorrectly, for example, and when the muscles on the outside and inside have different tone, this can also affect the up and down movement itself. The trajectory of the movement itself can also be uneven. But all of this still applies to cases where nothing bad has really happened yet. The most important thing is not to injure your joint. As a rule, if this is related to the hip joint, it's because either the gluteus medius muscle is weaker than the adductor muscle or the adductor muscle is weaker than the gluteus medius muscle. But also, during movement in the hip joint, the pelvis is always involved in this process. And the weakness of the gluteus medius and the adductor muscles is usually caused by the fact that the pelvis does not make the correct movement which should be combined with the movement of the thigh. But even if you restore the gluteus medius or the adductor and make their tone more or less equal, this will help strengthen the joint a bit so that it starts moving the way it should. The next situation is when there is a crunching sound with every movement. For example, this can happen when turning your head. A person turns their head and hears something rustling right here as every time they turn. It feels like one joint surface slightly rubs against the other. Or even during the turn, a click occurs. This click is not a one-time thing. It can happen quite often. That is, it happens once, and then about half an hour later it happens again. This is not a good situation. This isn't a situation where a crack happens once, and then everything is fine. Here, if every time you turn your head, even just a little, you feel this movement, it means that the joints themselves are not moving along the trajectory they are supposed to and the joint surface itself starts to wear out. If you watch the previous video, there's an example of one of the ways to turn your neck correctly. And in some cases, when a person tries to move in a direction that's not possible, Demand, or tries to move beyond the range of motion that the joint allows. That's when the joint surface itself gets injured. This happens very often in the neck. That is, when a person starts to turn their head, their movement comes to an end. And in this case, when he tries to turn his neck even more, but the upper part of the thoracic spine hasn't joined in this rotation, meaning there's no auxiliary movement right here with these vertebrae. And when a person tries to add even more movement here, he uses his own muscle effort to force this ligamentous apparatus to stretch. Another situation where joint cracking occurs is when it happens constantly. That is, you hear a constant cracking both when extending and when bending. This happens more often in the neck, but it can also occur in the hip joint or the knee joint. That is, with every movement, a person takes a step and there's a cracking sound in the hip joint. This situation, it it occurs when there is excessive load on the joint itself. For example, the hip joint. With each 
step. There should be a landing phase and a push-off phase. That is, two movements after the foot touches the ground. The entire movement of a step consists of several parts. The most frequent repetitive movement that we constantly do is walking. And during each step, there are certain phases of movement. Most often, hip joint injuries occur either during landing or during push-off. And at this moment, the gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, the muscles of the front and back of the thigh, and even the calf muscle are overloaded. So, if you find painful spots in the, the gluteal muscle area, but, for example, if you didn't work out the day before, you didn't have any prolonged exertion. But, if there are these tense areas, it means the muscle isn't coping with the load. If these tense areas or trigger points appear in it, these are places where the muscle is constantly being damaged, where it experiences excessive tension. In this case, the first thing you need to do is figure out why this muscle is being overloaded. There could be several reasons for this. It could be either this muscle doesn't have enough relaxation phase. The work of a muscle consists of several phases. There's the tension phase and the relaxation phase. And for almost every muscle, the relaxation phase is longer than the tension phase so that the muscle can fully recover during its work. But if the relaxation phase is shortened or absent altogether, the muscle wears out very quickly and is constantly damaged. And this affects the joint itself. When one muscle is weakened, it can no longer generate force and the trajectory of the joint's movement changes. The joint starts to move along a path different from the one it should. The joint surfaces come closer together, they rub against each other, and as a result the cartilage begins to break down, leading to osteoarthritis in this way. In all these cases, the cause of all these problems is movement. This movement that happens, you could say, is incorrect. If you move correctly, its recovery for your muscles 